It's hard to tell the difference between dreams and reality when the dreams are vivid. This nightmare is entirely too vivid. Even half awake, you can't shake it. Davy is in trouble. The sharp stab of the telephone ring snaps you back to reality. The phone's insistent tone is disturbing. The dream hangs over you like a premonition. You reach for the phone. You hesitate. Is Davy in trouble? He has been running around with bad company. You feel this call is going to be bad news. You brace yourself. You will just have to take what comes. Yes, whatever comes, you will just have to take it. But you're not the only one. What about the boy? If he's in trouble, he will just have to take what comes too. The training school for boys in Eldora is filled with boys who have been in trouble. You will find the Iowa Training School for Boys in Hardin County, a mile west of Eldora on Highway 57. The administration building, built in 1874, still stands like a Gothic sentinel on the campus. These buildings and these grounds are quiet now, but they have seen more than 13,000 Iowa boys. 13,000 troubled boys who have tried to find better futures on this campus. Since 1874, some of the buildings haven't changed. The troubled boys haven't changed. But our way of treating these boys has changed. The new cottage and the new ways of rehabilitation are coming in. But the old cottages and the old methods are going out. Yes, the methods have changed, but the boys have not changed. The boys at Eldora are just like the boys in Iowa City, in Osage, or in Grundy Center. Well, you can see for yourself, because Walter is here tonight, and Walter is one of the 233 boys in the Iowa Training School for Boys. Uh, Walter, I think the people who are watching this program would be interested in knowing how the boys came to be at Eldora Training School. Could you tell us that? Well, I think the biggest thing is that most of them hang around in a bad atmosphere and they hang around in bad company, bar rooms, pool rooms. Then they might pick up, oh, maybe a pin here, a pencil, maybe a dollar, something like that. It gets bigger and bigger. Maybe they run away from home and it just leads up to bigger and bigger things right along. I see. Then there is no one thing that causes it. Not all the time. It just builds up uh, over a period of time. Uh, since, uh, how long have you been there? I've been there nine months and two weeks. Nine months and two weeks. Well, you're just about ready to go out then, aren't you? Just about. Well, how have you spent your time uh, since you've been there? Well, I entered the school just about the time the school year started, and I went to school all year, finished my junior year. I played basketball, football, and participated in most, most of the activities around the school. Well, let's talk about your uh, leaving here again. Uh, what determines the length of time you stay there? Your behavior, your improvement, and many other things. I see. Are you, uh, I mean, are you given ten months to be there, or... Uh, a year, or how do they work? The, uh, the uh, least time you can be there would be 10 months, and if you happen to get bad reports or something like that and get a setback, well, that means maybe a month longer, two months longer, it just depends on what you do and now what you happens. Talk, you talk about getting set back. What did you mean by that? Well, if you, maybe you get caught smoking, it's a 30-day setback. Mm -hmm. Or if you run away, you, you might spend 12 months, you might spend 16 months at just whatever the case is. Mm -hmm. Now, how, what is your status right now? Uh, what is your classification? Or? I'm in A class and I go for double A this coming Wednesday, the 11th. That is pro consideration. Any time after that, in two weeks, I can go home. I see. Then you're, you're next to the last yes. uh, classification to go out. How many classifications are there? There are five. There's D class, C class, B class, A class, and double A. Now, uh, when you go out, if, if you go out according to your present plans, and you are getting out in the minimum time, apparently, uh, 
at oh. this point at least. Uh, what are your future plans, Walter? Well, I'd like to finish high school and go on to college. I'd like to be a coach. Well, I see you're interested in athletics, uh, seriously yes. interested at that point. Well, thank you very much, Walter, and I hope that uh, you have much success in the future. We'll be able to go to college as you hope and that everything will turn out well for you. I'd like for you to think for a moment just what is it like to be in a training school for boys? What's it, what would it be like to be walking across a campus for the first time? Well, at first you wouldn't know what to expect. This is a new experience. You're not at all sure what's going to take place or whether that experience is going to be a pleasant one. This is another beginning. But the beginning of what? What will it lead to? What's going to happen to you? Well, they ask you a lot of questions. You can answer those, your name and your age and so forth, that simple. But what's next? You can do this too. This isn't going to hurt anybody. But what's next? Well, you'll go across the road to the orientation building. You will stay here for three weeks. But what's going to happen here? You're shown to your room. The walk down this corridor is a long, long walk. You begin to wish you were home. You think of a lot of things in moments like this. There's nothing more terrifying than facing the unknown. You wonder if this is going to be like a prison. And you wonder what's going to happen next. Well, the doctor gives you a medical examination. So far, so good. Then you're in the barber shop. Every boy begins this way by getting cleaned up. You feel better with your hair cut and you look better too. Other boys are the barbers. A counselor talks with you. You're told to write a letter home and let the folks know how you are. And then you attend orientation lectures. The staff members explain the rules of the school. Rules? You haven't obeyed rules before. And here they talk about opportunities. That's something new. Well, they explain the routine. They tell you what's going to be expected of you. Well, there's always work to be done. And the boys around the home, around the campus, are expected to help with those chores and with the duties around the place. Many of these boys haven't had regular work, regular responsibilities, and so they well, that has been part of their trouble. Here, they are given regular duties, regular responsibilities. They are given an opportunity to learn a trade, to, to learn to do something that will, in which they might excel. Well, a program is set up to acquaint the boy with what he will be, what his opportunities will be there. He has a chance to request the work detail that he prefers. So, when you're a new student in the training school, you take a tour of the grounds. You see the kind of work that is done and what the opportunities are. Well, there's plenty of work to be done in the kitchen. You take a look around, look things over. You might like this. Work in the kitchen could be interesting. You might want to be a chef someday. Bakery has possibilities too. There's more here than cakes and cookies. There's more here than fresh loaves of bread. Here is an opportunity to learn a trade. You visit the dairy. This can help you if you want to be a farmer. Good, healthy work. Now, maybe this is where you'll fit in. Fitting in is important. Then there's the tailor shop. This would mean you might work part of each day making clothes for the boys, helping to cut out patterns and stacks of cloth, helping to sew. Again, this is an opportunity to learn a trade. A good tailor is a man to be respected. Good tailors are in demand. You stop here to be measured for a suit of clothes. Good fit is necessary 
and you have your own clothes here. Then you visit the print shop, and here you consider the linotype. This is a machine that sets newspaper type. In this shop, you could help print the Echo. That's the school newspaper. It tells the goings and comings of people and all about what's going on around the campus. As a printer's apprentice, you could learn how to print forms and bulletins. You can learn how to operate presses and other printing equipment, how to watch your fingers, keep them out of places they don't belong. This could mean a future of security and happiness for you. Many boys like to work in the print shop, but you're not sure. Not yet. Then there's the laundry. This is good clean work, and plenty of it, with hundreds of shirts to be washed and ironed. Good equipment here, all the latest washing and ironing equipment, doing things the modern way. Here is another prospect for the future. At last you meet with the staff. You feel a little more at home now. You answer more questions. What kind of work can you do? What do you like to do? You look into the faces of Mr. Puckett, the assistant superintendent, Mr. Schaefer, the dean of men, the assistant dean of men, Mr. Metlin. You talk with the chaplain, Reverend Blando. They suggest a work detail you'll like. And so you end up in a position of trust and responsibility at the office switchboard. We have another boy here tonight who is newer to the home, the school, than Walter was. Arvis, how long have you been at the training school? I've been there five months. You're just about halfway through then, aren't you? Yes. Uh, what detail do you have? We've just been looking and talking about details. Well, I'm in the machine shop. What do you do there? I do mostly turning on lathe. I see. Uh, if I brought in something to you, uh, like a cog wheel or something, could you do that? Well, I could do a good deal of it, and I'd have supervision by Mr. Ross. You get good training supervision then, do you? Yes. Sir. Uh, he, is he able to help you anytime you need it, and you really get to know the equipment, do you? Yes. Sir. How long have you been in the machine shop? I've been there about three months. Mm -hmm. And do you feel that you're really learning the thing? Yes, sir. I am learning a lot about it. Well, uh, with this machine, how did they come to send you to the machine shop? Well, it was mostly by my adapt aptitude test. Oh, I see. They gave you psychological tests when you went in. Yes, sir. Did they tell you that you had a, a good test, made a good showing on that? Well, they told me before the tests were over that I was made for a machine. Mm -hmm. So they really fit you in where it seemed best. Yes, sir. Uh, what about your schooling before that? Uh, how far did you go and so forth? Well, I went to the 10th grade in the juvenile home. The juvenile? You mean the juvenile home at Toledo? Yes, sir. How long were you there? I was there five years. Uh, how did, well, you were in one state institution. I don't understand how you got from one to the other. Well, at the juvenile home, I was there so long that I got kind of restless and I started running away and getting in trouble. and. They just got tired of me messing around, so they sent me to Eldora, transferred me from... Oh, I see. You were transferred from one to the other. Well, how are you getting along at Eldora now? I'm getting along swell. You feel that you've been straightened out? Mm. Yes, sir. Why? Well, uh, you say you were five years at Toledo. Yes, sir. And uh, the thing that interests me is uh, how in five years you would have developed the way you did, and in five months, you seem to be very well and nicely straightened out. Can you shed any light on that? Well, at Eldora, we have a goal to reach. We have a goal, and we have training there where we can take up a trade and learn something, and we're going to get out in 10 months. We know that. Uh, without going into a definite comparison between places and dealing it, uh, strictly with, dealing strictly with you, uh, you felt that you had no goal then, before. Well, at Toledo, all I did was just sit there and hope for a place. And now you, you have something to work for. Are you getting what you want? Yes, sir. Now. Very much so. Right. 
then the, the most important thing to you is to feel that you're working towards something yes, and you're sir. getting that here. Do you feel that uh, when you get out in five months you'll, you'll be straightened out, you can do something with this training that you're getting? I'm sure of it. You, you're feeling very, very confident. Yes, well, thank you very much, Arvis. Um, the training takes on many aspects and psychological tests show many things. Sometimes at the training school, the entrance tests reveal that a boy doesn't know how to read very well or in other directions has fallen down in his education. So they are able to place him in, a, in the school where he will fit best. If he can't read, he's put in a class where others like him are learning to read. He won't be forced into painful competition that may make him antisocial. So the young boy spends part of his time part of his day in the classroom. Then here in the shops, he gets training in the manual arts. He learns to work with useful tools and he acquires new skills. In crafts, the boys learn different kinds of handiwork that may replace the kind of pastime that once got them into trouble. Creative handwork has always been a good activity. Vocational agriculture is a new subject in the school. How to be a good farmer may also mean how to be a good citizen. In this case, the student gets accredited training in sound farming methods. He has his own project. It belongs to him, something of his own, responsibility. And Iowa is a farm state. There will always be many opportunities waiting for these boys who come out of the vocational agriculture program. As you can see from looking at these pictures, this is really a training school. A boy is, giving a chance, is given a chance to learn how to make a respectable living. He is taught a trade so that he won't have to resort to illegal methods of making a name for himself. Today there are 233 boys in the Iowa Training School. Boys from 10 to 18, most of them teenagers. Many of these boys haven't found the answers to many questions. They have failed to adjust to the society, or they have placed their emphasis upon false values and wrong decisions. A special work details such as they get here may help them straighten themselves out and sometimes work out those excess energies. On Sunday, these boys go to church where they learn the Christian rules for a happy life. But all of the training isn't in the work detail or in the church. Play is important. It's as natural as sleeping and eating. Games, too, fulfill a need, but they do something else. Games mean teamwork. Games mean following the rules. You learn to win or lose when you participate in sports. All of this is above board. There's a right way here, too, and the boys learn it. This is good, clean competition for everyone, and two or three times a week gives plenty of practice. Then there are relaxing moments in the cottages late afternoon or evening, games again, all a part of the rehabilitation plan. Checkers and other group games, studying and so forth in the cottage. Boys learn regular eating habits here too, all a part of a new pattern of living. Food is served cafeteria style in the campus dining room. Meals are planned by a dietitian who looks out for the provision of necessary vitamins. It's an important thing, too, to know that healthy, well-nourished boys have a different slant on life. There's a certain psychology that is always encouraged. This is a frequent ritual. This is a good habit for the future, too. Early bedtime is a part of the routine. Active teenagers need plenty of rest. They probably get ready for bed much earlier than they did back home. Lights are out at nine in the evening, and there's a prayer. After a full day of work, 
school and games, these boys are ready to turn in. And the night supervisor gets ready for his all-night watch. In each cottage, the house parents help with the process of getting the boys to bed and seeing that everything is in order. The key man in the organization that you have just seen is the superintendent. The present superintendent at the Eldora Training School for Boys is Mr. H. L. Miles, and he's here with me now. Mr. Miles, how long have you been at the training school? I have been uh, connected with the school for the last 23 years. 20 years as a uh, parole agent for part of the state and uh, three years as superintendent then you really have a long-range uh, uh, connection with this institution. I've been at it quite a while, yes. Have you seen any changes? In the uh, general uh, in the atmosphere? That's right. Oh, mm -hmm. yes. I, I, uh, in that uh, number of years, I think it would be natural to expect changes. We have uh, uh, shortened the length of time, uh, as a rule, that a boy stays there. I'd, uh, our philosophy... Uh, uh, doesn't include the thought that long continuous uh, uh, staying uh, is uh, the thing that's going to meet a boy's problem when he shows he can uh, meet uh, uh, his problems. We uh, are glad and, uh, and anxious to release him to a more normal environment, give him a chance again to uh, see if he can uh, make a good adjustment. Well, if, if you have shortened your time, do you consider that just the shortening of time and making the boy feel he isn't going to be there a long time is, is, has solved your problem? Oh, no, no. There's, uh, there are many other factors that uh, enter the uh, problem. The, uh, the general philosophy of the school, the matter of uh, uh, a boy, for example, uh, feeling and knowing, uh, as a matter of fact, that he's not there to be punished. He's there to... Uh, learn to, as I said a moment ago, meet his problems uh, where, and the encouragement on our part and uh, methods of uh, giving him this, uh, uh, building this feeling, he uh, uh, conforms more naturally. Well, now, uh, you mean then that uh, you are not punishing these boys? No, 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 that's right. We're not interested in punishing any youngster. Well, We're then wh what is the objective of the school? You must have some discipline. You, you mean just run, let that's them run loose? Or run? No. Discipline we certainly have. That's right. Mm -hmm. uh, without discipline, we wouldn't have a uh, training school. We'd have no program. Uh, the uh, uh, boy situation must be controlled, but it isn't from a, from a, uh, a punishment point of view. We attempt uh, to uh, get the boy in the spirit of cooperation. We try to show him by example and uh, uh, the methods that we use a better way of life and understanding the program uh, they are far more willing to adjust and make more effort at it we've shown a we've shown a wide training program here and we've shown all those things uh, are we to get the idea that this is sort of a picnic for these boys well no you couldn't you couldn't call it a bed of roses it's still a training school mm -hmm. and uh, uh, much as we uh, uh, want to develop the idea that it isn't, again, I repeat, for punishment, it's still, the discipline is important. Without it, that we would have no program. Uh, the boy must learn that uh, uh, for violation of rules and regulations, as for violation of laws uh, in society, there are penalties to be paid. Well, now, accept that. Uh, if, if you're disciplining one of these boys, how do you go about it? Is he sent in to you and you just arbitrarily say, we'll send you across the road? No, or? no, no, that'd, that'd be a nice easy way in a sense. Uh, we, uh, it's, uh, discipline is graduated according to the offense, uh, according to the spirit in which the offense is committed, and uh, according to the number of times an offense is committed. But how do you determine the, those things? A boy is... Uh, uh, in all ways under supervision of a, an employee and if that employee sees or knows uh, that the boy is not adjusting and needs uh, uh, some extra attention he is referred to the Dean of Boys who uh, uh, in a counseling atmosphere goes into the difficulty with him and tries to explain what his, uh, uh, his difficulty is and show him a way of overcoming it. 
then if it is, if that doesn't do it, the process is increased, that is, the penalties are increased. Your discipline then is handled largely by the dean of boys. And the next step is through the classification group uh, consisting of uh, six members who go into his problem uh, more intensively with the boy himself as a group. Tremendous responsibility then lies upon the dean of boys and upon these staff members that Indeed we saw here does. today. Yes, so the secret uh, of, the, of the success of the school depends largely on that, uh, on our discipline uh, approach to the boy. Are you able to get qualified people for those? Not entirely, no. So we have some very good employees, and we have some that, uh, unfortunately, uh, by temperament or experience or education are not qualified. Well, well thank you, Mr. Miles. Uh, I think you have helped us to understand a little bit about the training school for boys and the problems of the operation of that. Now tonight we have eight boys here who will show you the lighter side of life at the institution as they sing and play a number for you. sin towards our fellow creatures is not to hate them, but to be indifferent to them. That's the essence of inhumanity. In Our Care is produced in the studios of WOI-TV Ames I. Stewart. The program was directed by Lamar Smith. script for In Our Care is prepared by Hazel Allen, with production research by Fern Bonamy. The technical director was Charles Hawley. Portions of the program were on film. Next week, we will present the story of the Glenwood State School for the Feeble-Minded. Your announcer has been Bob Heskett.